Hey guys, welcome to Dog Forge. My name's Paul, and this is our Fizzbands Treasury of Dragon series. Do you want more D and D and Fizzbands content? Then hit that subscribe button and notification bell. Every subscriber helps to build and support our channel. And we are extremely grateful for each and every one of you. However, it's time to take a look at potentially the shiniest of Dragonborn. The Gem Dragons might give them a bit of a run for their money for that one, though. As today, we're taking a look at the Metallic Dragonborn. And we're going to open up with the art for this one as they put the art at the bottom of the entry for D&D Beyond. And I gotta say, I am really, really happy with this art. Not only do we have a wonderful dynamic piece of art, um, I believe the description says that this adventure is not only mid-combat, you can actually see the blurring on the sword, but she's also preparing to use her breath weapon. Now this is a very great way to highlight how things might look in combat for those of us that want to have a bit more of a visual aid to help along when we're imagining how combat's going. And it's also a very interesting depiction of a metallic dragonborn because they went with copper. And I think that's important because when you think gold, brass, bronze, that those things are relatively straightforward. But they did a really great job with the Copper Dragonborn and how they're using a lot of that kind of oxidized copper patina color. That greeny blue mixed in with a traditional copper hue. And I think it's come out just looking fantastic, frankly. But that's enough about one fantastic piece of art, and let's move on to the actual mechanics, shall we? So this is again there's a lot of shared traits between them your stats are going to be plus two and plus one of your choice or plus one to three of your choice the breath weapon is going to function the same you're going to swap out one of your attacks when you take the attack action so if you have extra attack you can still make an attack and use your breath now for the metallic dragonborn they are going to get a 15 foot cone it is going to be a deck save it is based off of your constitution modifier and on a fail save, it's going to take 1d10 of your chosen metallic ancestry, and that goes up at 2d10 at 5th level, 3d10 at 11th, and at 17th level, it will be 4d10. You can use this a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, and you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. Part of the reason why I don't like Wizards of the Coast's movement to proficiency bonus is because it's quite difficult to say proficiency bonus quite a lot when you're talking about it in a video, proficiency bonus now draconic resistance this works exactly the same as the PHB version you pick your dragonborn you get resistance to that element and again if you pick something like brass or gold you're going to get more commonly used resistance but you also run the risk of your breath being more commonly resisted or being immune to from the enemy monsters that you're fighting so you could pick something like acid or lightning and get a little bit more out of it but at the same time your resistance might not be quite as useful and you could have a horrendous moment where you use your lightning breath on like a shambling mound and accidentally heal it no i'm not scarred by that playing experience it wasn't my fault now things get interesting with the metallic dragonborn as they are quite nicely capturing their draconic ancestry here in getting a second breath option. This metallic breath weapon uses a separate resource. You can use it once per long rest. However, you do get two different choices when you choose to use it. Now, the first one is a little bit of general battlefield control. Uh, it still replaces an attack action on your turn. And it's going to be a basically a push and prone. Uh, it's going to be a constitution based save just like your main and when you use the repulsion breath you're going to be able to push them 20 feet away from you and knock them prone now this is generally quite a nice bit of control especially as there's no size limit you can knock a tarask on its butt if you want it to and that's quite nice that might get errated in the future because it is rather strong but it's also a fifth level feature seems quite reasonable However, that can be a little bit of a blessing as a curse, as you're pushing them 20 feet away, 
and depending on the initiative order and where you are in combat, you might actually make it a little hard for the melee based contingent in your party to reach them. But the most interesting option here in my opinion is the Enervating Breath, which is a constitution saving throw, and the first one was a strength saving throw if I didn't mention that, constitution saving throw, or just become incapacitated until the start of your next turn. And this is a cone. You could incapacitate, if you got lucky with the dice and the DM, very unlucky, an entire encounter. That's kind of crazy. Now, it is important to realize the limitations of the incapacitated condition. It'll pop up quite nicely there. And that's just actions and reactions. Act that does include bonus actions. So they can't do anything, but they can still move. It's... A little confusing sometimes because the incapacitated condition is mixed in with other conditions quite a lot of the time or other status effects. Incapacitated does not mean unconscious. That is an important distinction to be aware of. However, even though this is once per long rest, that is a encounter changing and potentially ending ability. Being able to shut down all the damage and control of your enemy for an entire turn is great. Now it is based on constitution and that is typically a strong monster save. However, it's not typically a strong monster save if you're fighting something like spellcasters, which that would be very handy to incapacitate. So overall, very interesting option. Uh, if I were to pick one of these, I would... Realistically, I would probably pick silver because I have an affinity for cold and ice magic. Uh, however, I think if you're looking to optimize a little bit, then the copper option for the acid breath is probably one of your best bets if you want to get the most out of your breath. If you want to strike a balance between your breath and your resistance, then you're probably best off going brass or gold to get that fire. And of course, the artwork for the copper is exceedingly cool, so great breath weapon. You'll be great at fighting oozes. And you'll look really cool with that nice green tinge. Now, let us know what you think about the Metallic Dragonborn down below. If you're an artist and you'd like to have your art featured on the channel, then please drop us an email at thedogforge.gmail.com. It's in the description. Just make sure that your art is related to D&D and PG-13. So, let us know what you think about the Dragonborn, which is your favourite what do you think about that incapacitation breath? And whilst you're down there, hit that like button if you like this video. If you want more Fizzbuns and 5e content, then hit that subscribe button. And the notification bell. Damn. I don't have that sound effect, but ding ding. And if you want to get a video straight away, there should be end cards popping up if I've done that correctly. And I haven't forgotten. So that you can get a video straight away. I've been Paul, and I'll see you next time at the Forge.